Christmas. It's all a lot of humbug. Christmas? A uh, humbug? Come now, I'm sure you don't mean that. And I'm sure I do mean that. What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. What reason for you to be so miserable? You're rich enough. There's no such thing as rich enough. Only poor enough. Oh, don't be so dismal, Uncle Veneza. Well, what else can I be when I live in a world of fools, babbling Merry Christmas at one another? What's Christmas for but finding yourself a year older and not a day richer? 
If I could work my good nephew, every idiot who goes about with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. God forbid, uncle. You keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Then let me alone. And be good enough, sir, not to bother me during business hours. And get off me things. You'll ruin them. Seven o'clock on a Christmas Eve? That's not business hours. That's drudgery for the sake of it, and an insult to all men of good will. Here, here. Thank you, Bob Cratchit. Another word from you, Cratchit, and you'll celebrate Christmas among the great unemployed. Very well, sir. Quite. Yes, and you're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into politics. You're fool. <laughs> Come out, uncle. Don't be angry. I want my wife with me tomorrow. There's another thing. If you hadn't had enough problems, you wouldn't let yourself marry. Now, why in God's name did you do that? Because I fell in love with the lady. Love. If there's one thing more nauseating than a merry Christmas, it's some happy marriage with some lovesick female. Good afternoon, sir. Very well. But my uncle stands up. You are always welcome. Just like Christmas itself. I said good afternoon. I ask this of you. I want this of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. Merry Christmas, Uncle. And you too, Bob Cratchit, and your family. Thank you, sir. And feel good day. <clears throat> Oh, and Uncle, <laughs> a Happy New Year. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, sir, but it's uh, seven o'clock, sir. Correct, Cratchit. I don't wish to be impertinent, but will it be too much to have on the way just now, sir? The trouble with you, Cratchit, is that all you think about is money. You'll be wanting the whole of Christmas Day off tomorrow, I suppose. If it's convenient, sir. It is not convenient, sir, and it is not fair. Yet if I stop your wages for it, you consider yourself ill-used, no doubt. Aren't I ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work? Well, it is Christmas Day, and it is only once a year. That's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. I don't pay good money for you to be forever on holiday. I appreciate your kindness, Mr. Scrooge. That's my weakness. I'm a martyr to my own generosity. I give him one Christmas off, and he expects them all. Very well. Take the day. But. I expect you to be here all the earlier the next morning. Oh, I will, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And a Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. A Merry what? I mean, I'm sorry, sir. No offense, sir. There's that motherfucker. Fifteen shillings a week, a wife and five children, in, and still talks about a Merry Christmas. They belong in a lunatic asylum. The lot of us. Pump Barker. <laughs> Oh, 
how to buy the shoes that they need. So have I, two pounds, five shitty. Well, as it's Christmas, so I'll be giving people an extra week for me to pay. Oh, then, then I shall give you an extra week or two to pay. Oh, thank you, sir. Which will cost you a further twelve shillings. Twelve shillings? Unless you would prefer me to confiscate your store and its contents, which is my legal right. You've already had a few more days. If you can afford to stop turkeys like that, you can afford to pay me. You can give me uh, two pounds of kidneys and I'll give you another three days. Barrels. Thank you, Mr. Two pounds, please. Wrap them up and I'll take a home. He's here, Miller, and you owe me two pounds, seven and six. Pity it doesn't pay you better. Where's my money? Moral for sure, Mr. Scrooge. It's my best day of the year. Moral to be two pounds ten. Or your puppets belong to me. Something that occurred to stop them in their useful purpose. And you are not our 
endeavoring to raise the funds for the poor to buy the meats and drinks and means of war. We choose this time because it is a time when one keenly felt his abundance rejoices. What may be put you down, sir? Nothing, sir. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. That is what I wish. I don't make myself marry at Christmas, and I can't afford to make either of these women marry. I've been forced to support the establishments I have mentioned through taxation, and those who are badly off must go there. Many would rather die than go there. If they had rather die, then they had better do it, and decrease the surplus population. Yes, friends, decrease the surplus population. Scoundrels and sycophants and flatterers and fools, Pharisees and parasites and hypocrites and fools, navigating swindlers, parakeeting fools, perpetrating goodness and demonstrating fools, feeding on their fellow men, being rich. Ebenezer Scrooge. Hello? Hello? Need somebody? <gasps> Ebenezer Scrooge. How uh, now? What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Better to ask me who I was. 
Where were you then? In life, I was a part of Jacob Jacob Morrow. Can you sit down? Of course I can sit down. Please do so then. You don't to me, do you? No, I don't. Why do you doubt what you see? Because I have a slight stomach disorder, which has undoubtedly affected my vision. Your your hallucination. Probably brought on by an undigested bee who bit a bee for a blob of mustard. That's what you are. You're a blob of mustard. Scrooge, death, the grave, and gravy about. You do not exist, Jacob Marley. Humbug, I tell you. Humbug. Humbug, eh? Now do you believe me? Absolutely, it's my that you will visit the Newman Council, but, but now, sir, that you are on farewell. Why do you walk the earth, and why do you come to me? I am doomed to wander through the world to witness what I could not share, but might have shared on earth and turned to happiness. Why are you fettered by that great chain? I wear the chains that I forged during my life. I made them link by link and yard by yard. And now I can never be rid of them any more than you will ever be rid of yours. Why? Well, Think of the weight and the length of the mighty chain you're making for yourself. It was as long and as heavy as this seven Christmases ago. You've labored at it mightily ever since. It's a terrible. Ponderous change you're making, Scrooge. Why, you'll take a man speak comfort to me. I have none to give. Very little is permitted to me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. When I live, my soul, like yours, never wanders far beyond the narrow limits of our counting house. You were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind is our business, Ebenezer, but how seldom do we attend to it. I know this because I have sat invisible at your elbow many and many a day in your office. My goodness. Watching me. Hear me! My time is almost done. I am here tonight to warn you. It is your only hope. No, Jacob, no! See the phantoms filling the air around you. They astound you, I can tell. These inhabitants of It was a dream. 